So we're moving on to chapter three now. Thank you again, Dr. Frost and Andrew Blackett for these amazing slides. Um, this is probably one of my favorite chapters here. So we're doing gra uh, algorithms on graphs, okay? And we're gonna be learning about the different types of algorithms. Now, these are the definitions that we should have learned from last lesson, okay? I know I went really fast with them, so I don't expect you to know them now. Um, you know, you might not know them and that's okay. But these are the definitions that I will be using throughout today. So make sure you do learn them because you will be quizzed on them. And these are the definitions that are gonna get you those method marks in the decision papers, okay? So, um, what we're going to be looking at today is a minimum spanning tree. So earlier when we looked at the spanning trees, we're going to find one with the least weight. Now for short, minimum spanning tree. Nice and easy, it's an abbreviation. Okay, so first one we're going to look at is Krishkal's algorithm. Here are all the rules that you have to do, okay? So the best way to do it is, even though it's great to have these rules, is to see it in action. So we're going to order step one. We need to sort the arcs into ascending order, okay? So you will need to write these down. So look for the smallest weight. The smallest weight is DE, which is four. DE, four, okay? We then have AE, which is five. Okay. Uh, then we have AD or A, yeah, AD. Nope, sorry. BC is also five. Um, and then we have the sixes, which is AD. And we have BD. And then we have AB, that's seven. And then we have CD, which is eight. So, nice and simple. So, what we now do is we consider the weights of these, okay? So, step one. We start um, with the arc with the least weight. It doesn't matter about the node. The one with the least weight we know is four, okay? So, we're going to start ED, which is four, or DE, sorry. We're then going to move on to the next least weight. Now it's AE or BC. Now because they are the same weight, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. We can just choose random. I'm just gonna go with AE because that's the first one we've written. So AE and AE. We're then going to choose the next smallest one, BC. Oh, I've already done blue, sorry guys. BC, which is five, okay? We're then gonna move on to the next one, which we've got AD, which is six. But if I do AD, which is six here, you can see I've created a loop, okay, a cycle. Now we know in a, in a tree there are no cycles, so I cannot use that one. So what I would actually write in the exam is reject AD. Okay, oh wait there, I forgot to take off the yellow. So I would write reject AD. And the reason why I'm rejecting that one is because it would cause a cycle. I would then go to BD. BD is six, here we go. Now you can see for the diagram down here, okay, that actually I've now connected every node so here is my minimum spanning tree. So you're also going to reject the last two because they are not needed. We then, minimum spanning tree has a total weight of five plus four plus six plus five. Okay, this is 20. Because this is our five, four, six, five. And there we have it. We repeat all the steps until, voila, all the nodes are connected. Right, so test your understanding, give it a go, um, and have a look at what's going on. It should be nice and easy for you.
Also, just to note that your spanning tree might be different to um, somebody else's, depending if they have the same weight, if you chose one way and they chose another. But again, it doesn't matter because you will find the minimum spanning tree. So in the previous one, you can see I listed them in order. Now, even though this is great, as you can see, there's quite a lot going on here and I do like to save time. So what I do is as I list them, I actually do the question. So first of all, I can see the ones with the least weight is a one in one. So BC is one and JI is one. I would then start colouring them in. Okay, so B, C, J, I. I then start looking for two. So I've got B, E, which is two, C, D, which is two, C, G, which is two, G, I, which is two. I think that's all the twos. Okay, so B, E, that doesn't create a cycle. Uh, CD also does not create a cycle. CG does not create a cycle. And GI does not create a cycle. I then go for the next ones. Um, free. So LK is free. I don't think there are any other frees. I think that's the next smallest number. So L. Okay, which is free. Okay, the next smallest one, EF, which is four. Um, EF, which is four. Then after that, I think we have the sixes. So I've got AB, which is six. AC, which is six. And AD, which is six. Now, AB, mm -hmm. I'm just going to choose AB. Okay, if I was to choose AC, that would create a cycle, or AD, that would create a cycle. So I will be writing reject. Reject. I then look for my next smallest one, which is 8JL which is eight, um, JL, which is eight. I can use that, so I'm going to. And you can see I'm not creating any um, cycles. The only one I have to now connect is H. Now, lucky for us, the next smallest number after eight is 10, okay? So we can write FH, which is 10. Mm. Okay, now we can stop because we now have a minimum spanning tree. Okay, and we can put reject the rest. Now we do need to write down what the rest are. So we had FG, which is 11. Um, HI, which is 12, IK, which is 16, um, GH, which is 22, and HK, which is 25, okay? So there we have our minimum spanning tree. So now I can add up all the numbers. 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. So my minimum spanning tree has a weight of 41. Yeah. Okay, so here is an exam question. Now, we looked at bubble saw. Okay, I'm expecting you to do bubble sort. So, um, sorry, not bubble sort, quick sort. So if you could apply quick sort and then you can do the exam question. Five plus four is nine. So you've got nine minutes. Off you go. Okay, so remember when we do quick sort, 
we need to write the numbers out again. Now I'm going to do this a bit quicker <laughs> than I did in the previous video, just so you can see what I would be doing in an exam. So when I'm using quick sort, I need to find my pivot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 15 is my pivot. So anything less than 15 stays on this side. 11, 7, 14, 9. Okay. My pivot was 15. Um, and then we're going to have 18, 20, 17, 21, 23. Perfect. So now I need to choose two new pivots. In the middle of 7 and 14 is where it would be. But because I don't, I'm going to go to the right. Now, if I go to the right here, I have to do go to the right on this one, but I don't actually, because 17 in the middle. So it's going to be 11, 7, 9, um, 14, 15, 17, 18, 20, 21, 23. And then remember, these were my old pivots, 14, 15, 17. Again, going to choose my pivot, so 7 on this side and 21. Okay, so it's 9, 11, um, and it is 18, 20, 23. Okay, so 7... 14, 15, 17, 21. Now I'm going to choose 11, 20, and 23. So 7, 11, 14, 15, 17, 20, 21, 23. I've got my 9 and 18, and then I have to choose them again. And then write it all out. 7, 9, 11, 14, 15, 17, 18, 20, 21, 23. And then the magic words, sort, complete. Okay, always make sure it makes sense. Does it go 7, 9, 11, 14, 15, 17, 18, 20? Yes, it does. Okay, perfect. So now you've done that sort, the reason why they've asked you to sort this into ascending numbers is actually because all of these arcs here... Uh, all of the numbers and the weighted arcs are these numbers. So it then says, using your answer to part A, which we did, and Krushkel's algorithm, find a minimum spanning tree. So we know that 7 is the smallest. We're going to locate 7, CF, which is 7, okay? And we can use that. The next smallest is 9, okay? So GI is 9, and again, we could use that. The next smallest is 11. Okay, now there's two 11s. There's BC, 11. Uh, CD, 11. And BF, 11. So I can use CB. I can use CD. I have to reject BF. I need to reject that one because it will make a cycle. And I need to write that on. After 11, it says it's 14. EF is 14. Then, uh, after 14 is 15. FD, 15, reject. Because that will make a cycle. After 15, it's 17. BE, 17. Again, we're going to reject. Why? Because it will make a cycle. No, it's not. It's 16. Have I missed a number somewhere? Yeah. Oh, golly. In this part, I've missed the number 16. Okay, well, this is great. Sometimes this happens in the D1 exam. It happened to me. You know what you've got to do? Go back and do that again. Okay? You would have to do that again. So this is a really good learning point, actually, because if this happened in the exam, innocent mistake, okay, um, I'm going to get rid of this. I know I'm going to have to do that again because I forgot the number 16. Okay, the next one is 16. So H, 
i is 16. I can actually keep that. 16. Then I have <clears throat> 17 b e. Uh, 17, I'm going to reject it because it's going to make a cycle. Okay, after 17 is 18, A, B. Oops. A, B, which is 17. I'm going to allow that. Now, even though um, all my nodes are now connected to something, this is still not a minimum span minimum tree because I need to connect this part of the graph and this part of the graph together. So after AB is 17, we have 18, which is BA. No, what on earth have I done? Oh, that's E, sorry. No, we reject this one. No, wait. I've written the same thing twice, haven't I? Wait there, I figured it out, my mistake. Right, AB is 18. We're keeping that one. There we go. Right, now the next one is 20, which is AC. I'm going to reject 20 because if I was to put that here, it would create a cycle. Then we have after 20, 21, which is EG. I'm going to keep 21. Okay, I've now finished, but I still need to put reject the rest. And I need to write them down. Now, lucky for us, it's only one, FH, which is 23. So now I need to, um, I don't think it says I need to write the weight. Okay, it doesn't. Maybe that's part C is what is the weight. I don't actually need to calculate the weight. Right, this might now give me time to rectify my situation, okay? I spent seven minutes, 39 seconds on a nine mark question. I'm not gonna redo this one again, but obviously 16 would be here, okay? Um, so you would go back and do that again or else you're gonna, uh, blah, 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 gonna lose five marks, okay? Okay, and that is the actual um, mark scheme there for the top one, okay? All right, brilliant, okay. So now we have Prim's algorithm. It's slightly different because we have a slightly different set of rules. Now, the main difference between Prim's and Krushkal's is Prim's looks at the vertices, okay, or the nodes, and Krushkal's looks at the arcs, okay, or as we like to call them, edges. So, so we might use one more than another, and we're going to come to in a minute why once we actually have a go at it. Okay, are we ready? So here is a question. Now, what we do is we can choose any vertex to start. Okay, so I'm just going to choose E, uh, E, A. I'm going to choose A, and the reason why I'm going to choose A is just it's the beginning of the alphabet. And then what I do is I start at A, and I have a look. At A, I've got five, six, or seven. So five is clearly the smallest. So I'm going to use that one, five. I can now either look at A or D. From A, I've got seven and six. And from E, I've got four. Which one is the smallest from A and E? Four. So I'm going to use this one. I can now look from A, E, or D, okay? Now, from A to D is six, which is one of the smallest, but if I was to choose A to D, I would create a cycle. I can't have that. The next smallest is D to B, which is six. And then finally, I now look at the smallest from A, E, D, and B. Now, the smallest is five. Lucky for us, that doesn't create a cycle. There we go. So my minimum spanning tree is five plus four plus six plus five, which is 20. Now, as you can see, going back to that previous question, this is actually a lot quicker 
than when we use crush goals. And that's because we don't have to list anything in order. Is you do need to write down the order. So we did do AE, which was five. We then did ED, which was four. We then did DB, which was six. And we then did BC, which was five. Make sure you write them down to get those full marks. Here we go, test your understanding, please. Okay, so um, I'm going to look first, I'm gonna start at A, okay? So I'm gonna start at A, now I can choose any path. I'm just gonna go A, B, which is six. Then looking at A and B, the smallest is one. So I'm then gonna do B, C which is 1. Then from either A, B or C, the smallest is in fact 2. I can choose B, E or C, D. It doesn't matter which one, as long as it doesn't contain a cycle. B, E, which is 2. And my smallest one then is in fact C, D. C, D, which is 2. From there, the next smallest one is this 2 here. So C, G, which is 2. And then GI is also 2, that's smaller. So GI is also 2. IJ is 1. IJ is 1. Then the next smallest number connected to any of these is 4. So that is EF, which is 4. Then the next smallest number connected to any of these is in fact six. Okay, even though three is there, it's not connected yet. Six, though, um, is, we can't choose six because it creates a cycle. Now we do not have to write reject, okay? We just look for the next smallest one, 10, FH. which is 10. The next smallest one, oh no, I forgot eight. So right there, that would have to be eight. J, L. J, L is eight, and then it'd be 10. Oh, golly. Um, F, H is 10. And then we would have, no, we wouldn't have FH is 10 then. We'd have um, KL is 3. Then we'd have FH, which is 10. Perfect. Now we have our minimum spanning tree. So this spanning tree, I think, was different to earlier when we did this question earlier. But, I mean, it might not be actually. Um... We might have chosen the only thing that might have been different is which if we'd have done a b a c or a d but our minimum spanning tree should still equal 41 if i add them all up minimum spanning tree equals 41. okay this is a typical exam question okay now, for this exam question, the total, you get three marks for each of these. Off you go. Okay, so a few different answers, and the one that we looked at earlier. State two differences between Krishkal's algorithm and Prim's. It wants you to state two, and that's how you're going to get two marks. Okay, firstly, we know that Krishkal's starts with the smallest arc, okay? And what else do we know? That prims um, starts with any node, unless specified, okay? What do we know about crush rules? Krishkal's requires the arcs to be uh, listed in ascending order, doesn't it? 
okay? The other thing, um, which I know you guys don't know yet, but also we are going to be using prims on a matrix, is that prims can be applied. Prims can be applied in matrix form. Okay, but crush girls can't. So there's a few different things you could write. Please make sure you write two. Okay. Part B, list in the arcs in the order that you consider them. Find a minimum spanning tree for the network in the diagram above using part I is prims and part, part II is crush goals. Okay, so let's start with prims. So first of all, prims, we're going to start with any node. You know me, I like to start at A. So from A, the smallest one I've got is 25. So AC, I need to write that down. AC 25. Okay. Then I've got from A or C, 18 is actually the smallest. It's AF, which is 18. Then my next smallest, I've got 26, 29, 27, 21, and now we've got F, 20, 21, or 23. 20 is the smallest, so that's FD. 20. The smallest from there is actually 19 from any of them. DE is 19. I think then the smallest is 21. But if I use 21, I'm going to create a loop. And if I use 21 here, I'm going to create a loop. So then I go back 27, 29, 26, 23, 24. 30 or 28, so 23 is definitely the smallest. FG, 23. Oh, yes, I did forget 22, good spot. See, this is sometimes, it's so easy to make mistakes. Here we go, DG, 22. Then it's 23, but that'll create a cycle. And... Really, I just want to try and get to B now. So if I look, I've got D is 28, E is 30, and A is 27. So I am going to use A, B, which is 27. A, B, which is 27. Okay, so there it is. Done. I have created a minimum spanning tree. So that was prims. Now I'm going to use crush goals. So I'm going to use it on the same thing. So we start with the smallest one, which is 19, DE, 19, and I'm going to accept DE, okay? Then we have 20, which is DF, which I'm going to accept, DF, 20. The next one is 21, no it's not, and I've started this all wrong, because actually CF is 18, which is the smallest now, again, this is easy to happen as long as you spot your mistake and rectify it. You're okay. Then after 20 is 21. C, D, or E, F, I need to reject because they will create a cycle. E, F, 21, reject. Now, you can see why it's better to put these in order first than for me just going at it. And this is the whole point. It's showing you, oh, okay, I might try and do it this way. But actually, you might end up forgetting something. FG is 23. That's not the smallest. 22 is. Okay, 22 is the smallest. So that is DG. 22. Then it's 23, which we're going to reject. FG 23, reject, because that's going to cause a cycle. And then I'm hoping it's 24. EG 24, we're going to reject that because it'll create a cycle. Then 25, yep, we can keep that. 25, so that's AC. And then I think I've spotted a mistake, guys. Reject. I've spelled reject wrong as well. Oh my god. 
Then the smallest is actually AD. Why didn't I choose AD earlier? No idea. But I'm going to rectify that. Put that there. Yes, there was a reason why I didn't choose AD. Does anyone know? It's because it's going to create a cycle. Miss, why do you reject BC? AC. Oh, I don't know why I've written reject. Because I've coloured it in. Okay, the next is AD. AD, which is 26. Okay, we're rejecting that one, definitely. Okay, after 26 is 27, isn't it? B, A, B. 27, now we are going to use that. Now, in this case, we actually have the same spanning tree for both. Same minimum spanning tree for both algorithms, which is great. And then we're going to put reject the rest. But we do have to write them. So, after 27, I think it's 28, isn't it? B, D, and B, C. B, D, 28. B, C, 28. Now, normally I'd write this, by the way, in a column, but um, there's not enough. Uh, A, E, 29. And then I think it's just B, E, that's 30 is left. Perfect. So there we go. Now, you can see this was three, six, eight marks. It's literally taken me eight minutes. What we're going to look at is we're now going to apply Prim's algorithm on a matrix, okay? It is really, really simple. You just have to follow the instructions. Okay, so this time though, we're going to be applying this to a matrix. Okay, so you need your colours at the ready. Now, this is what I'm going to do. So step one, choose any vertex to start the tree, okay? We are going to choose A, okay? So then what I do is I label this one, so I know the order, and then I delete that row, okay? From A, now I've chosen this one, I look down to see which one's the smallest. Which one's the smallest? Eight. So circle eight, that means B is my number two and I cross this out, okay? So that means from A to B is eight, okay? Now I look at one and two, which one is the smallest? 10. So I circle 10 cross the row out, and then this is the third place I visited, so A to C is 10. And then now I have either, I can look in one, two, or three. The smallest is seven. So circle seven, cross that row out, and that's the fourth place I've visited, so that is seven. I can then draw um, my I can then draw it, okay? So that's nice and easy. So this one was a really simple one because I only had four. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at a typical one that we'd find in an exam question, okay? So this is a typical exam question. Um, I don't know how many marks, one second, I'll find out. I'm gonna say five marks, okay? So it's five marks, and we're gonna give this a go. Okay, so step one, get a nice color. Okay, so choose your starting, well, no, actually, step one, read the question. The table shows the lengths and kilometers of potential rail routes between six towns, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Use Prim's algorithm starting from A. Okay, the reason why I said the question is because normally it tells you where to start. So we're gonna start at A, so that means A is number one, and we cross a out. Because we've labelled A as number one, that is the column we can look at. So we can only look in column one. And we do want to find the smallest, okay? It also says you must list your arcs in the order that they are selected. So first of all, the smallest one is AD. 
So from A to D is 70. I'm going to write AD bracket 70. And then that means D is my second place and I can now cross out my D column. So that was my first step. Now what I'm going to do is I can now look in either A or D, because up here they're already chosen. So A or D, the smallest is actually in A. It's 95, isn't it? Because if you look, 1, 2, 5, 1, 50, 100, 195. Smallest is 95. Okay, so 95 is my next one. That means E is the third place. Okay, so then that's A, E, that's 95, A, E, 95. Perfect. Okay, now I can either look in A, D, or E to find the smallest one. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's 125. Yeah. So 125 is the one I'm cho choosing. So this is BD. This is the fourth place I've visited. And then have BD125. BD125. Absolutely fantastic. Right, the next place uh, I am going, I can either choose from A, B, D, or E. I want to find the smallest one, 180, um, or 150. Okay, 150 is the smallest. So this is the next place I've visited, is C, 5, so that's C, D, that's 150, and I now need to cross that off. C, D, here we go. 150. Perfect. Now, last but not least, um, I can now have a look at all of these to see which one's the smallest. It is 155. And then that's the sixth place. Cross that out. 155, that is C, F. There we go. 155. C, F, 155. So here we have it. This is my minimum spanning tree. Now, I could have drawn it like this, or if I wanted to, um, I could have crossed, let's see what I mean. So like, we obviously, we had E, A, D, B, C, and I could have just crossed that there. So that's F, E, A, D, B, C, okay? It says draw your tree, which it did. It hasn't asked us for our minimum spanning tree total. So we don't have to do that, okay? Okay, so looking at the comparisons, because this has already been done, it's a bit difficult to see. I just need to quickly draw this again. A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. Um. Okay, sorry. So, if you think about this, right, we're going to start at A. So, this is going to be our first one. Okay, and we cross A out. That's gone. So, then we have four numbers. So, we're going to make three comparisons, aren't we, in the first one? Okay, because we're only looking here. We've got four numbers. We're going to make three comparisons and we're going to choose 10. Okay, we now cross out row D. So now I've got row A and D. How many numbers are left in A and D? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means we make five comparisons, yeah, because we already crossed out. And the smallest is in fact eight. Okay, so this is the third place is now is C. So we've got A. C, D. How many numbers have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So again, how many comparisons have I made? Five. When I actually look, I think seven's the smallest. So that's E, which is the fourth place I visited. Now, let's have a look at how many numbers are left. One, two, three, four. So how many comparisons am I making? Three, and the smallest is in fact nine. And that's the fifth 
Brilliant. So that means there has been a total of 16 comparisons for this matrix. Okay? Nice and simple. So if I asked you how many comparisons you had to make, realistically, you just need to think how many numbers do you have to select from, and your comparisons is always going to be minus one of that number. Okay? So how can we generate a formula for this? If we had an n by n matrix, what would it be? Okay? What would it be? It's going to be a little challenge for you to do, and um, we'll take a look at this on Tuesday. Okay, now we move on to Dijkstra's. Now, Dijkstra's is really simple. You've just got to, um, you've just got to have a look at what's going on, okay? You've got to follow the rules. Now, you will learn that you will know the rules off the top of your head, okay? Um, it just happens with these rules. So here we go, are we ready? Okay, so first of all, when we have Dijkstra's algorithm, you'll see that we're gonna have a normal graph and then what we do is we turn it into some form of graph like this where we have the vertex the order of labeling the final label and working values i'll explain all of these to you in a second but when you're in the decision exam you will your graph which looks like this it will be given to you like this because they want to see how you work things out okay and you're always provided with a template and for example it might say um do the shortest route from S to T. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to now do that. So even though the instructions were on the previous page, I'm not going to be using them because I know obviously Dijkstra is off by heart, but we're going to start. Okay, are we ready? So if we need to start at S and get to T, find in the shortest way. Step one, okay, we're starting at S. And here we've got the order of labeling, the final label, the working values. Okay. When we start at S, this is the first place we visit, isn't it? And so far, we haven't traveled anywhere. So we have a travel of zero. Okay. And this is step one. Okay, from S, where could we go? We could go to B. And how far is B away? It's free. So this is going to go in my working values. And then from S, I can also go to C. And this is 8. And then from S, I can also go to D, which is, in fact, 12. Okay, so that's step one done. Nice and simple, isn't it? From S, I cannot go anywhere else, can I? So now what I do is I look for my smallest working value. My smallest working value is... Three. So this becomes my final label here, is my total weight here is free, and this is now the second place I'm going to visit, okay? <coughs> I'm now going to use a different colour pen. Now from this second place, where else could I go? If I went to E, remember this is my final value free. So now, if I'm at B, which is free, if I went to E, how much am I at now? Five. Three plus two is five. Okay. Then, I'm at B, and my final value was three. If I went down to C, three plus four is seven. Now, seven is smaller than eight. So I'm going to write seven. And then from B, can I go anywhere else? No, I can only go to C and E. Okay? So, now I look at all of my working values, which is the bottom box. Which one is my smallest? It is E. So E is my next box I'm going to. E is the third place I visit, and it has a total weight of five. Okay, this is my now my total weight. So now I'm at E. Okay. 
And from E, I can go to C. 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay, 8 is not the smallest. I have to write 8 down, but it's not smaller than 7, so I write 8 and cross it out. It's just to show that from E, I've taken the option of C. Okay? And from E, where else can I go? I can go to T. 5 plus 14 is, in fact, 19. Okay, perfect. That's all the places I can go from E. So now I look at all of my boxes again. Which one is my smallest working value? It is, in fact, C, which is 7. So now this means that C is going to be my fourth place I visit. And we have a total value of 7 right now. Okay? It will become a bit clearer in a minute what these total values mean. Okay. Going to move on to a different colour. So, I'm now at C. From C, I have a total value of 7. I can get to T, can't I? From C to T, 12 plus 7 is 19. I'm just going to write 19. From C to D, 7 plus 3 is 10. Okay, that is actually smaller, so I'm going to cross it out. And then from C, from C to F, 7 plus 9 is in fact 16. Okay, that's all I can go to C. So now I have a look at C. And um, I have a look at all the boxes. Which one's got my smallest value? It is, in fact, D. So D is the fifth place I've visited with a total weight of 10. Okay? So now I'm at D. Where can I go from D? From D, the only place I am able to go is F. 10 plus 5 is, in fact... 15. So I'm going to write 15. Now, that's all I can go. So I look between 15 and 19, which is my smallest values. It is, in fact, 15. So this now becomes the sixth place I've visited with a total weight of 15. So the only place from F to visit is T. 15 is our total weight, plus 3 is 18. That knocks the others off the park. We've got 18, and that's it. So this is the seventh place I've visited with a total of 18. So now we have completed the algorithm. You're probably wondering what it does. It looks at every possible solution and route and finds the quickest way to get from S to T by going in different routes. For example, from S to C, if we went directly, it'd be 8 kilometres, let's say. But did you know if you went through B, it's only 7 kilometres? Yeah? The direct route isn't always the quickest. So how do we find this route? Well, this Dijkstra's has told us there is a route from S to T which has a value of 18. So being able to find this, we now have to work backwards. So you get your highlighter out. So here we go. So we're at T, we're at 18. 18 take away, is 18 take away 14, 5? No. Is 18 take away 12, 7? No. Is 18 take away 3, 15? Yes, yeah, so I know that's my next one. Okay, so 18, we would then go down to F. So T, F. Okay, we're at F. 15 minus 5, is that 10? It is, okay. So then I go to D. I'm at 10 minus 3 is 7. Yes. 7 minus what? 7 minus 3 is not 5. 7 minus 4, there we go. Back to B, and then down to S. 
So the, the quickest way to get from S to T is to go S, B, C, D, F, T. And this has a total weight of 18. Okay, so as you can see, we've already done this one. Perfect. Um, oh, next page. Here we go. Okay, so test your understanding. So, find the range of values of x for which Peter should follow the route. Oh, that's part B. Okay, do part A first, please. Can you do part A first? Okay, using Dijkstra's. And this has got algebra in it as well. It's very lovely, isn't it? Peter wishes to minimise the time spent driving from his home to the campsite. Um, on the diagram below, use Dijkstra's algorithm to find two routes from H to G, one via A and one via B. Um, okay, perfect. So, we're going to start at H. Okay, this is the first place we visit with a weight of zero. From H, we can go to I for 50, F for 130, C for 140, E for 95 and D for 80. Now the smallest available one is 50. Okay, 50, so that's the second place we visit with a total weight of 50. 50 plus 90 is 140, that's the only place I can go to. Okay, but it's not small enough, so stop it. Now, I look at all of my working values. The smallest one is in fact 80. This is the third place I visit for 80. 80 plus 70, is 150 but it's not smaller than 95 so I now have a look at the smallest one which is 95 so this is the fourth place I visit 95 95 plus 30 is 125 95 plus 40 is 135 that's the smallest okay so I can only go there. So 135 is, no, 125 is now my smallest, isn't it? So this is the fifth place I visit, 125. From here, I can go down to C by adding 50. I get 175, but I don't want that. Or I can go up um, to G, which is 165 plus 5X. Okay. Now I look for my smallest value. My smallest is F, 130. So that's the sixth place I visit at 130. From F I can go to C by adding on 30, which is 160, but it's still 135 is the smallest, isn't it? And then from F I can also go to B, which is 200. The smallest available one to me now is in fact C, 135. So this is the seventh place I visited for 135. From here, I can go up to B, which is 195, and that cancels that already. So this is now the eighth place I'm visiting at 195. 195 plus 70 plus 2x is 265 plus 2x. And then this is the ninth place I visited, and we don't know, it could be either or, okay? so. Now what it wants to know is it wants to know two routes, one from A, one from B. So my two routes, so working backwards, if I had to go from G and I went to A, I would use, I would do 165 plus X and then I would get down this route to A, 125 plus what, minus what leads on, it's actually E, isn't it? And then E actually leads right back to here. So the first route is H E A G. Okay? And this has a total of 165 plus 5x. Okay, now I'm going to find another route. This time it's going to include B. Now I know this one was the one plus 2x. So this one has to be B. I'm at 195. Um, I think I have to minus 60, don't I? I'm going to get 135. 135. How did I get to that? Minus 40 leads me to E. And then 
down here, wasn't it? So that is H E C B G, and that is a two hundred and sixty-five plus two X. Okay, part B it says find the range of values of X for which Peter should follow root A. If that means he should follow root A, that means root A is smaller than root B. Okay, it, sorry, V A. So that must mean 165 plus 5X is less than 265 plus 2X. So we want to find the range of values. So 3X is less than 100. So X must be less than a third. Okay, is it a third? No. Thirty three point three recurring. Thirty three and a third, isn't it? Sorry, I had a hundred percent in my head divided by three. It's not hundred percent, it's a natural number. So but also we know that x has to be what? Greater than or equal to zero, because that's what it says in the question. So this is our range of values, okay? It's a hundred over three. Or you could write this. Either way. So that's nice and simple. Okay, we're going to do this one first. This one's a bit easier. We don't have any algebra. Okay, this is just to practice the algorithm. So let's start on this one. Uh, use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the smallest time from S to T. Find a root and see the minimal time, etc. Okay, it's probably about eight marks. Off you go. Okay, here we go. So we know we're going from S to T. So, um, let's use Dijkstra's algorithm. So, first of all, we know we're starting at S. Okay, so this is our first place we're going with a total weight of zero. From S, we can either go to A, B, or C. 22, 18, 17. Now, the smallest is 17. So, this is the second place we're going to visit with a total of 17. From C, we can go to E, 17 plus 6. 23, or we can go to H, 23 plus 15, 38. Okay, now the smallest out of all of these is in fact B. So this is the third place we visit with a total weight of 18. From B, we go 18, we can go to E, which is 21, that knocks that one off the park. And 18 plus 8 is 26. I now look for the smallest one that hasn't been chosen, it is E. So this is the fourth place we visit with a total weight of 21. From E, we can go to F. No, I'm joking. We can go to H. <laughs> 21 plus 7 is 28. So that knocks that one off the park. 20, or we can go to G. 21 plus 6 is 27. I now look for my smallest one, which is, in fact, 22. So this is the fifth place I visit with 22. From A, we can go to F, 22 plus 15 is 37, or we can go to D, 22 plus 3 is 25, knocks that one off the park. I now look, and the smallest uh, weight at the minute is 25, so that's the next place I visit, that's visit 6. Total weight of 25. From 25, I can go to G, which gives me 27 as well. Okay? That's just, that's the only place I can go. Right, now at G, I'm on, this is my seventh place I've visited, 27. Okay? From G, I can go to T, 37. That's the only place I can go. So now I look for my smallest weight. 28 is my smallest. So this is the eighth place I've visited with a total of 28. From H, I can go to T. 28 plus 11 is 39. I write it down, but it's still not smaller than 37. So I cross it out. I now look. Where is my next smallest place? 37. F. Now... Gonna choose F because I still haven't chosen T. Okay, so F is the smallest now on 9, 37. Remember, we want to finish with T. 37 plus 8 is 45. But doesn't make any difference. So 
The tenth place I visit is two because that's the last place I want to end up with a total weight of 37. So that tells me there is a path from S to T which is going to give me a total weight of 37. So step one, it says use Dijkstra's to find the shortest path from F to S to C. I'm going to take a picture of the mark scheme for you as well. Um, in the mark scheme, they want to see... I'll just show you quickly. And that says find a route to travel from S to T in the shortest time. So when we're at T, okay, here, now I'm at T. My total weight is 37. Okay, so I'm going backwards. I now, to find the route, I have to go backwards. Is 37 minus 8 37? No, so that's definitely not part of the route. Is 37 minus 10 27? Yes. Yeah, and 37 minus 11 isn't 28. No. So the only way to go is G. So I know it goes TG. I'm at 27, I'm at G. Is 27 minus 6, 21? Yeah, and is 27 minus 2, 25? Okay, it's quite... Okay, we could, we could go two ways now. Where it's set tame, we can go one or the other. So let's go to D. Let's just follow this path of D. Okay? I'm at 25, I'm at D. Okay, so I'm at 25, I'm at D. Is 25 take away 3, 22? Yeah. Perfect. Go this way. And then, I know that 22 take away 2. So, to get from S to T... I've done S, A, D, G, T. And this gives me a total of 37. But we could have gone another way, couldn't we? Okay, because it says, is this route unique? It's not. Is this the new unique solution? No, because we could have gone this way. G, okay, let's say we got to 21. What's 21 take away 6? It's not 17. What's 21 take away 3? It is 18. And 18 take away 18. So actually, we could have also done S, B, E, G, T, couldn't we? And this would have still given us 37. Okay? It then says, on a particular day, Avanish must include C in his route. Okay? So I have to include C. If I have to include C, again, I work backwards and then I say right from here, I can get to C this way, can't I? So then what I would do is after I've worked backwards, is I would then say, okay, so I have to do this. So remember, go across here and then go here. So this would be S, C, E, G, T. This would give me the shortest route if it has to include C because this is the most optimal path. So we need to try and find the optimal path that includes C. But what are we adding on? Well, 18 plus 3 is 21. 17 plus 6 is 23. So that means we're adding on 2, aren't we? So 2 to the final, which is 39. Okay. It then says, find a route of minimal time from S to T that includes C and states time, which we just did. So that was a nice and simple question. Right, and that is the end of the chapter. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's fantastic. If you need any more, please use, um, use the book. Good luck, well done, have a great day.